Hey guys, uh, you are in for a treat today. You're going to meet a member of the Rattlesnake Gang, and you're going to find out what that is all about. Tim Oliver, what are you going to do today? Hey Eric, it's great to be here. Um, you know what I thought I might do is um, I got to looking back here a while back in a, in a kind of a time of, of introspection. I got to looking back and and in, in in this process of becoming a better painter, I was I was looking at what did I do uh, the 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 paintings that I felt were the were my most satisfying or the, the best thing that I could do for my own personal feeling. I got to looking back and I, what did I do? And so I, I noticed that in each of those cases I had in watercolor, I had developed, I mean, in, in, in my sketchbook, I had um, really took the time, taken the time to develop a pencil sketch uh, to a higher degree of completion. And so... Uh, On the painting itself or in advance of the painting? In advance of the painting. In, in right. my original sketch of, the, of whatever the, I, was, I was wanting to do, uh, I spent a, a lot of time. A lot of, a lot of this goes back to my, my love of pencil sketching. I'm, I love watercolor and I love everything about watercolor, but, but I think my true love, my first love, was pencil and sketching and uh, and so the paintings that i felt were most successful the ones that i spent uh, i spent probably not unlike an oil painter who would would take the time to do a uh, uh, a study and study it and so that those are the times for me where i develop a sketch and i see the compositional issues and i see the value uh, patterns and the and the value structure that i'm looking for and I just really get to know that scene. So when I paint it, I know it. I have a more intimate level of understanding of the scene. So I thought what I might do is kind of real briefly show some examples of that. And then we'll just do a, a demo if we can make our camera work. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll make it work. And, and so you're going to do a watercolor demo? Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. Terrific. Well, why don't we get started? Let's go ahead and get into the lesson and uh, thank you for, for doing this. I'm going to just make a quick announcement while you flip your camera. Okay. Are, you, are you going to show some things first? Uh, I'll, I'll show some things after I get the camera set up. Okay, terrific. And, and so I'm going to take you off screen for a second, and then you can get that resolved, and I'll be right back. Today is day number 336. Hard to believe we've been at this since this coronavirus craziness began. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur in Plein Air Magazine. Welcome today. We're glad you're here. We are, we are having some fun. Um, so here's what's going to be happening. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now. I'm going to take a vacation. You heard right. Uh, after 336 days, I need a vacation. My brain is fried. Uh, and I'm going to take off work too. I, might, I haven't told my team yet, but I'm just going to not work for a whole whole week or two weeks. I don't know how long. I'll come back when when I feel like it. And in the meantime, what we're going to do is I'm going to pre-record some openings for this show. And assuming we can pull this off, we're going to take some of the best of from some of the shows over the last 336 days and re-air them. And so uh, hopefully we can edit out some of the uh, things that are no longer relevant, things that may have been discussions for a particular day. Sound like a plan? That's what the plan is. Laurie and I are going to climb uh, into the motorhome and uh, take off and uh, head to Florida to see some family. And um, we have to stay distanced, but we're going to see them, even if we have to see them from across the, the way. Um, also, I should mention to you that uh, the winner of my book uh, today is Jennifer Ning from New York. Uh, I don't know what city, but from the state of New York. And today the prize is a digital subscription to Plein Air Magazine, a one-year digital subscription. And you should know the digital subscription of the magazine is 20% uh, more content than the uh, print edition. And the print edition is the number one selling art magazine at Barnes & Noble nationally. We're pretty proud of that. Uh, and also at uh, Michael's stores, it's it may be... We think it's the only actual art magazine in Michael's stores. They just started carrying it a, a few months ago, so we're happy with that. Make sure you go in there and tell them you want it if you don't find it. If, uh, if you want to know what we do, if you're tuning in for the first time, 
go to streamlinepublishing.com and slash everything. And that's where you can uh, find out about all the different magazines, events, newsletters, products, and things that we do. Um, all right. So now we have Tim Oliver back, hopefully. Now, Tim, your uh, camera is upside down. Okay. All right. I couldn't tell. Let me let, let me try this. Okay. Whoa, I'm getting seasick. Is that better? Yep. Yep, that right? it is. Okay. All right. This is... Are we having fun yet, guys? All right. All right. So uh, you need to move it over a little bit to, uh, let me see. Wait. No. Yeah. Move it over to your right a little bit. There you go. Now, now we can see it. Good. All right. Is that pretty good? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Tim, you're on. Well, let me plug my, let me plug this thing in so I, my battery don't run down. <laughs> So I saw something the other day on uh, TikTok, and uh, they took an electrical meter. Uh, they they showed a, a kid with a phone up to his ear, and they did the electrical meter, and it there was no electricity coming out of him. And then they plugged the phone in and held it up to his ear, and the electricity was coming out of him. So the lesson they said is, if your phone is plugged in, don't hold it up to your ear. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So uh, I, I apologize. I'm I'm techno technologically challenged out here, but but uh, uh, if it if it looks good there, I think we can make that work. Can you see my palette a little bit? Everybody always likes to see the palette. Um, well, if you would move your palette over where the color example is, yeah. <clears throat> In other words, you may have to cover that up. That's fine. That's fine. I'll move it over. Oh, I can't move it very far, but I'll move it a little bit here. All right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, first of all, Eric, I got to say, um, I'm glad you're taking a vacation. You need one. And I, we really appreciate what you've done for the community. Um, but um, I, I, I kind of got tickled. I was watching uh, Michael Mendler yesterday and um, you described him as the uh, Da Vinci of our time. And so uh, I think it's really interesting that you, we go from that to to uh, to me on the next day. And and I could best probably be described as a baboon with a brush and a bad attitude. So, uh, you know, it's not uh, <laughs> we're not going to this is don't uh, this is not Da Vinci style, but it's it's me. So, um, you know, every 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 artist has every artist matters. Every artist has something to offer. And you wouldn't be on this show if you weren't any good. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm terribly nervous about this whole situation. But All anyway. Right. Well, all right. Time to get over it and move on. All right. We're moving. What I might do, and tell me if you can see this, because I can't see. But Hold hold, but, hold the papers up over over the drawing. There you go. Okay. I'll, I'll do it like that. So, um, I, I, real quickly, and I don't want to do very much of this because um, – uh, um, I want to get to painting, but but uh, I just went back through and I made some copies out of my sketchbook and, and of some of the images that that uh, I, I love to sketch. This is uh, so this, and I'll just go through these pretty fast, showing you the sketch and showing the, you the resulting painting. So you can see that 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 sketch is much more than a thumbnail. It's more developed, but 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 it teaches me a lot in the process. So there's the painting that came out of that. And it's not a very good copy. It's just a Xerox copy of the painting, but you, but hopefully you can see that, that the, the preparatory work that I've done uh, has, has paid off to a certain degree. I'm so let move. me ask you a question. You, the yes. sketch that you did, did you do that sketch on your watercolor paper first? No, that's in my sketchbook. Okay. And then you did, you did a sketch again on the watercolor paper. Exactly. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, and and what did you sketch with? Um, uh, I normally sketch with a with a fairly soft pencil, like a like a two B or a HB. Sometimes a usually a softer lid. And and that's the same on the watercolor paper as well. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Yeah. Keep it simple. You're very, you're very polite. You must be from Texas. Well, I can't help. That. Yeah, that's that's born and raised. Born and raised. Um, West Texas, and we we don't really consider y'all uh, part of Texas down there. 
Yeah, well, we, we kind of feel the same way about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move kind of quick here. Um, so this is a little bit different. That, that This is more of a, a sketch in my sketchbook of that scene using using watercolor. I don't know why I threw that one in that's not pencil, but it's another another way of, of looking at values um, in, in that case. The resulting painting was that. Um, so anyway, moving right along, this is a sketch. This is a fairly, fairly uh, quick sketch for me, but it was a simple scene. The resulting painting. I know. Put, them, put them side by side so we can see. All right. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, this is one a little bit different. I've been exper exp experimenting using uh, charcoal as my as my sketch medium, and this was a sketch done entirely in charcoal, and and then the the uh, the painting actually in this case um, I, I worked out some things in this charcoal sketch and then painted watercolor right on top of it. So so. You have a question from the audience, which was, why did you use the grid? You had a grid on another painting. Um, I used that grid just um, on this one. Yeah. That was just my way of reminding myself that the, the whole rule of thirds thing, my, my focal point being down here in this, in this lower quadrant. Will you explain the rule of thirds? Cause some people might not know that. Well, the rule of thirds is, 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 uh, Kind of a tried and true compositional theory that that um, I don't know who came up with it or if it's just kind of a natural thing that that if you'll divide your 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 uh, paper into thirds and if you can generally locate your your point of interest or your focal point at one of those intersections of that of that um, uh, grid then your likelihood that your composition is going to be uh, visually correct is higher. That's right. And when we were all in elementary school, they taught us to put everything in the dead center. And that's the one place that you typically want to avoid. Now, all rules are meant to be broken. Exactly. Exactly. And I see some, some incredible work that violates the rule of thirds all over the place. Uh, Joseph Zabukovich's work, he'll a lot of times have his his uh, his horizon line smack in the middle you know which seems like a huge uh a violation but who's going to argue with joseph's work it's incredible and it works so if you know the rules you can break them i don't i can't break them very well because i don't know them that well so um so this is a little scene um um pretty quick little sketch not highly developed but probably more developed than a thumbnail might be or or something like that um, and then the resulting painting from that. I don't want to get bogged down in, into talking, but so I want to move on a little quicker. But that's just a little little tractor painting I did it a few years ago. Um, uh, I, I I confess and I admit that um, I love to sketch, and so so part of the 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 passion in painting for me is the sketching. And so there are there are artists who would disagree with that theory i'm sure and and they would they would uh not have uh, as as highly a developed sketch as, as i like to do uh and do 10 times better painting than me so uh, i'm not suggesting that this is the the right way to do it it just works for me somebody asked if you sell your sketches i think you have them in a sketchbook is that right i do and as a matter of fact it's an interesting story um ian stewart uh, and you know Ian. Um, Ian years ago uh, told me that he never sells, he never removes a page from his sketchbook. It's a very personal thing for him, and I felt uh, I I feel the same way. It's 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 kind of a diary. It's kind of a collection of things that someday my kids will probably use for uh, uh, starting their fireplace. Um, but but for me, I don't I don't ever sell a sketch. Uh, I did one time, and it was actually this sketch right here. Um, uh, I tore it out. A friend of mine really wanted it, had a real personal connection for him, and, I, and I've regretted it ever since. So I uh, You know, if somebody wanted to commission a sketch, I'm sure you would do that. 
Yes, sir. Okay. I would. Uh, but I wouldn't sketch it in my sketchbook. The, um, this is a, this is another one just to kind of give you an idea of where it starts and where it hopefully finishes. Um, I, ha I have a lot of people that will um, uh, make a comment. I don't know what this says about my painting ability, but they'll say they like the sketch better than the painting. So, you know, so any, I don't know what that says about me as a painter, but um, this is another example real quickly of the sketch versus the painting. And hearing no comments, I'll move on a little quicker. Another another example. Beautiful. I'm sorry, I, I didn't comment because I had my mic muted. No, that's fine. No, that's that's fine. I'm I'm just uh, until somebody says slow down, I'm going to go a little faster. So we'll have time to paint. But this is one of my favorite paintings that I've done, and and I sketched it two or three times. I think I used it in a in a uh, workshop to 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 kind of help explain the the value structure, you know. Uh, and, and, and people, people know this. And if you don't know, this is, I'm always, we're always, all artists are, are always looking for a good value range from zero, which would be the widest, uh, the wide of the paper for us watercolorists to the darkest darks, you know, so I've got real, I don't usually have five values, but in this particular deal, I was like, I've got five, five distinct values and hopefully it works. And I, I think it did on the, in the final painting. Uh, this is a little bit, this is a little more like a no tan, but it's, uh, it's uh, using, using some markers and just to work out those values uh, and, and the composition. So I, I've always liked that painting. I don't know why. That's a little gas station down at uh, Midway, Texas. Yeah, we got one around here like that. I like to paint. Yeah, yeah, they're always um, they're always good. This is a one that uh, painting that that uh, I call it West Texas skyscraper. So every every town on the plain, the Great Plains of this country, has got a grain elevator. I just love the love that painting, uh, and uh, fairly fairly well developed sketch, and. Real quickly, this is one I did. Uh, it's Charles Goodnight's house up in Goodnight, Texas. Um, that that uh, um, that pen and ink sketch there. You know, I, I, I picked that one because I it was a pen and ink. And I've been working on a, a little series of of uh, historic uh, uh, still lifes, and so that was a sketch I did one evening, and I've done two or three. I haven't done a final painting of this yet, but I've done two or three kind of studies of it. But you can see where we're the, the whole idea is I learned so much from a sketch. Yeah. Uh, that I put into the that I hopefully transfer into the final painting. So cool. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully that was helpful. I'll set that aside and and I'll show you in my sketchbook. This is a little barbecue joint down the road from me. It's less than a mile from my house. Um, and uh, and uh, every time I drive by there, it, uh, I'm intrigued by the place. It's sort of a, sort of a uh, uh, ramshackle kind of a place and, and fairly popular. Been there for years. He does all his cooking out in the van and then he's got a couple of tables on the inside and, and, it, and it feels like it's, the whole place is gonna fall down when you go in there. But, but uh, I, I was, I, out one day and I sketched that view of it and I thought in preparation for today I thought uh, that'd be a good one to paint well you know you're preserving Americana all that stuff is eventually gonna fall down it is it is and you know for me um, uh, my my most successful paintings are 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 of of scenes and of places that that uh, there for whatever reason there's a connection i feel a connection there and i feel a i feel a, a spark of something um I, you could set me out um in front of in the adirondack mountains like you like you do and 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 the most beautiful scene there or in the rocky mountains and if i don't have some kind of a connection or some kind of a feeling i know my painting's not going to be good and so it's those places that i drive by 
um, uh, that I have a connection to or those. Well, every, every, everybody has something that turns them on. And, and I remember driving with a buddy, we were looking for a place to paint and every place he wanted to paint. I didn't want to paint and vice right. versa. And I remember Ken Oster, we were out painting in this really, really beautiful area in this old farm. And, uh, he decided to paint an old Cadillac sitting in the garage rather than painting the beautiful vistas. So and everybody's got their own thing. There's not a right or wrong. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're exactly right. And somebody said one time about my work, they said, uh, you, I don't know if they intended it as a compliment or not, but they said, you, you seem to paint the stuff. The rest of us drive, just drive by. And, and I, I had to agree with that. And I kind of like that because I I'm, I'm always looking for those, those things that I, that I kind of have a connection to um, it doesn't always translate into good sales, but it's, but it's, uh, it's uh, at the end of the day, I don't do this for sales. I do this because I just uh, enjoy it, the whole process and it's deeply fulfilling for me. Um, so you can see the, um, and interrupt Eric, anytime you want to, it won't hurt my feelings. Um, uh, How about now? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Would you mind just being quiet for a minute? Yeah, I, I got I, I got an email this week. They said stop interrupting the artist by saying where everybody's coming from. So I'm going to stop. <laughs> no, no, don't stop. It's good. It's all good. There's probably not anybody watching any, anyway. If they, or if they did, they're already left. Anyway, yeah, no, uh, there's only one person watching. Okay, good. That's good. Just me <laughs> and you, Eric and Allie. Um. So, so that's where we're going with this. And, and I don't know that I'll have time to fully finish this, but, but we'll get a good start. So here we go. I'm, All right. As, as you can see, I've trans, I've not transferred. I've redrawn. I, I, I like to draw so much that I don't, I don't, I very seldom will project anything or trace anything. I like to draw. And I decided a long time ago, if I'm going to learn how to draw, I need to draw. And so um, that's just me. That's just a personal thing. But I would encourage anybody, that person that's listening, if you don't feel comfortable with your drawing, the only way to get over that is to draw, 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 draw. And, uh, and so uh, I know a lot of, uh, of your guests will concur with that. I hear that all the time, but it is true. So here's the, here's the sketch. Um, and, and you can see I, what I learned from this sketch is it's, a, it's kind of a horizontal um, uh, composition. Um, uh, and very linear. Uh, there's there's some really interesting shapes here. To me, they're interesting. Sh this shape, this shape, these all these shapes. But by themselves, they're just shapes. And the tree forms a really good shape uh, there. But but what I found is that I need that connection. If you'll see the darks that connect, so everything is connected, even up into the tree. So we've got a good strong connection horizontally. That pulls I, the composition together. I think that's worth noting because uh, uh, connecting your darks is really a critical thing if you can do it. It really, it really is. I've learned that over the years. But when you when you can, and there's times where I will make a connection that doesn't exist in the scene, but it needs to be in the painting. So, so, and then there's other times where I screw the whole thing up and don't do it, and it's and it's subpar painting. But anyway. This is the main thing I learned in this sketch was that I need to connect these shapes and these darks and and uh, and uh, in order to tie this kind of long linear. I learned from Charlie Hunter a long time ago. He, you know, he paints a lot of, of landscape formats, long uh, horizontal formats. And he, I asked him about that and he said, well, that's the way your eye works. I mean, that's what we see. We see in that in that that fashion. And I think there's some real wisdom in that. I've got this drawn out in, in more of a, a, a rectangular format. I could easily crop this thing along about here, and it might be that that's the way to go when we get going. But let me go ahead and get going, if that's all right with everybody. Um, um, I'm, the other thing that I want to say real quick is I'm, I'm going to paint this sort of in a, in a complementary color using using blue and orange. And I did that just, uh, I don't always do that, but I like to do that because look at all the range of, of, of colors and values that I can get using only two colors. So, so while I'm only using orange and blue, French ultramarine blue, 
Daniel Smith, and I'm using Transparent Pure All Orange by Core. Um, those two colors, I, there's a, there's a, there there's a um, infinite number. Uh, values and chromas that I can come up with out of that. So, so you made those, all those colors from the mixture of those two colors. Of those two colors. All of that and do you go through this uh, this exercise before you do a painting? Typically, to you know what what is your going to be your dominant colors and colors used? I, I do, I do usually, or sometimes I just know where I'm going with it because I've done it enough. But I'll do these kind of things a lot, just just to sort of. To see what are the possibilities here, you know, and and uh, I I enjoy doing that because you take take every every pair of complementary colors and you and you're talking about a whole different different world. Look at what Tom Schaller does with with his complementary colors. You know, it's just incredible. Um, I've learned a lot from him. But anyway, uh, that's that's what I'm planning on doing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a with a uh, an orange kind of a sky. We've had a good out here in Lubbock. We have good dust storms every once in a while, and so we get these orange dust filled skies, and so they're they're kind of fun to paint. So what I'm going to do is just uh, just lay in a little bit of water here, just to kind of pre wet the that. What you I want to try to know what kind of paper you're painting on, and what kind of brush you're using. This is Saunders Waterford. It's my favorite paper. Uh, 140 pound cold press, and I'm using uh, here are the brushes that I plan to use. I'll usually start with a mop. These are all Escoda brushes because Joseph says that that I'm supposed to. And uh, if I if I use the same brushes that Joseph uses, I can maybe paint like him. Well, it's kind of like if you use the same golf club clubs that Tiger uses. Exactly. Same I understand principle. his are not going to be used for a while. Same, same principle. Too, too, too soon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, too soon. So, uh, so I'll start with a with a mop, and then I'll I'll work, I'll go to a to a, a number. What is that? Twelve pointed round, and then I'll kind of work myself down. I usually fi finish up some detail stuff with the with a rigger from Cheap Joe, and uh, and so I can't. I have a hard time painting and talking at the same time but let me go. So I'm going to just start with a little orange sky and I'm painting on about a 30 degree angle. So I'm going to let this kind of uh, work its way down. My, th my thinking is that, that is that I'm going to leave uh, the brightness of the sky up in this corner over here because all assuming that the sun is coming sort of this way, my shadows are all going to be going that way. So I'm going to leave the sky a little brighter over here. And, and, uh, and then I'm just going to tease this, uh, this bead down the, down the page. And, and I have to always remind myself to wait on it and let it do its thing. You can see that bead forming right there. Always have to be very conscious of how much water is in your is in your brush at any time, or you'll get you'll get overloaded. But um, I'm gonna te tease this on down and let it let it just sort of do its thing. I've been playing with watercolor lately after Watercolor Live, and uh, really enjoying it. Yeah, that's great. I knew you were, and that's 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 fantastic, Eric. I, I just, I, you know, uh, uh, somebody just sent me a kit of Russian watercolors that was very generous. Somebody else just sent me a, a, a whiskey painters kit uh, uh -huh. about the whiskey painters. Yeah. And uh, gosh, I just keep getting all these good things. It's really sweet. Now, if I could only paint. Well, yeah, it's, you know, you know how to fix that. You, you already know that. It's just a matter of putting in the, putting in the time, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is, is hopefully at this point, I'm going to just be painting with water and I'm going to bring this on down. I'm going to probably switch to my pointed round so I can, so I can, uh, I'm going to cut around some stuff as I come down with this bead. 
this first wash is always really important to me because it kind of sets the mood of the painting. And uh, actually, I need to, don't I need to, and then I I'll just I'll just bring this down. I'm just painting with 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 water, kind of tinted water at this point. I could add a little bit of more color in there if I wanted to, but have you ever painted with coffee? Uh, no, not really, not really. I mean, I've I've heard of guys that doing that, but uh, but. Uh, uh, and I, mean, I think we could start a whole trend. We could start the coffee painters and only paint with coffee. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, and then, then you could say, well, this one was done with a latte, and this one was, you know, you can <laughs> kinds of coffee. This is a cappuccino here. Um, I'm I not have, sure uh, the milk would do really well. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure either. I've what accidentally is the color up. you're calling orange. Sir, tell us the orange color that's your base color. Uh, it's it's made by Core. Q O R uh, is the brand. Uh, my friend Spencer Meager turned me on to this color um, down in Texas, San Angelo at Plain Air, Texas this year. He used it, and, and I, I really like it. It's transparent, pure all orange. So it's you're different. also a Plain Air painter. Yes, sir. I love the fact that you call me sir. I, it's very polite. Oh, well. That's the way they raise them in Texas. Well, we that's the way I was raised anyhow. Yeah, me too. So I'm gonna just that, that bead is sort of just working working work its way down and I'm gonna I'm gonna almost forgot about this one over here. I'm gonna bring it right down to the horizon line for now. A lot of times I'll I'll paint right through right through the horizon and, and but I, I don't want to do that because then I need to let it dry. So that is done. Now I can come back later at the end if I want to and, and do a little glazing to if I need to change some things up there. But for all intents and purposes, that sky wash is done. Now what I'll do is uh, since I'm 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 cut in here and all around this these structures and kind of terminated that that uh, um, wash, um, I can do a little bit of tidying up here and, and so I don't get some stray stuff happening. But, but, and then I can pick up some of that extra water on a, a thirsty brush like that and I'm good to go. And what, so what I think I'll do now is, is I'm kind of going on the fly here, but what I'll do is, uh, is uh, do, um, I, I would normally kind of turn the, let me get my other brush. I would, uh, I would turn this upside down to do this other wash. So see if I can do an upside down wash. Uh, but I can't, I don't want to turn it over, turn it around. I got everything set here. So I'm going to try to do an upside down wash. I'm going to put my color in here down at the bottom and then just kind of work it up. I don't really want any 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 strong oranges up here, but I, I do want to tone the tone the the foreground. All of this will get painted over, so it's not real critical how I paint it. Um, um, I just wanted to get some some foreground in there. Just because it, just because. While that upper stuff is kind of drying. All right. I want to remind you guys that it's nice when you say where you're from, make a comment, you can win a prize. I'm from Lubbock, Texas. Well, you weren't talking to me. Uh, I was talking to everybody. <laughs> Somebody asked what angle you're painting on. You said 30 degrees. Is that right? About, about 30 degrees, yes, sir. I think some of my Rattlesnake Gang guys are online, and they promised me they wouldn't heckle me, so I guess they're not heckling very hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I encourage them to start right now. Tell us about the Rattlesnake Gang. I know uh, Richie is part of that group. Yeah. Um, uh, Richard Sneary and I, about six or seven years ago, we, um, we went to um, the out OPS, Outdoor Painter Society, was having a paint out down in Big Bend. And so we, we decided it was right after Plain Air, Texas, and we decided, well, let's go. And so we went. We didn't ever run into any of the OPS people, but we had a great time painting together down there. And so the next year, uh, Greg Summers uh, joined us, and Lon Brower joined us. And, and so that was kind of the, the, the core. And then we've added a couple of three people that were interested since then. So we were up to eight people now. And, um, but you don't all live in the same places. I mean, Lon lives yeah. back east, doesn't he? Yeah, Lon lives in uh, right outside St. Louis in the Illinois side of, of and Greg is in Kansas, Greg's in Kansas City, and Jeff Williams. I meant, forgot to mention Jeff, Jeff's in, in Stillwater, and um, and uh, Sneary's in Kansas City, and then Richie's in South Texas down by Victoria, and Margie Hildreth, she's in uh, she's in um. Uh, San Antonio, and um, and then Allison Minky was going to join us this year, but got her flights all canceled and everything. So, and she's back in in Maryland. And Allison's uh, Allison's getting married. Yes, she is. I heard that. I heard that. I heard that. It's going to break a lot of hearts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So um, anyway, we just kind of got started, and, and we decided to go back every year we just we just have such a such a good a good uh 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 spree to core and and we enjoy painting together and being together and uh it's a lot of fun this year it was only four of us made it uh, everybody kind of got weathered out and that this was uh, during the big storm in texas it was and it was you went to of, big bend yeah it was kind of like ted cruz we we skipped out of town um <laughs> it was uh it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, um, the weather was, somebody had said, did, did you have any weather down there? And, I said, and I, we tell them, yes, we had weather. We had every kind of weather. We had snow, we had rain, we had wind, we had sun, we had it all. But it was nothing like it was here. So, oh, man. Yeah, it, it was terrible here. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm looking out the window. We have the the people from serve pro here. Now they're going to try and fix our roof and our, we had, we had taken drywall down yesterday, took carpet up. It's a big mess. Well, man, I hated to hear that. I heard you heard you had some pipe problems. Um, um, so what I'm going to do now, I think I'm dry enough up, up here that uh, a lot of times I'll just go in with a, a real neutral, so my neutral right now is, is between those two colors, kind of half, sort of halfway between. Um, if you can see that, it's sort of a gray. I could blue that up or I could orange it up a little bit, whatever I want to do. But, but uh, I'll just take that kind of a bluish neutral and sort of, I do this for myself just because I have, I have a very low IQ. And so I get, um, I get myself mixed up every once in a while. So I'm only looking at my sketch here. And so I know that I've got some, some shadow uh, things here and there. And so I'll probably need to dilute that a little bit more, but, but I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and, and identify some of those, uh, some of those darks right now and they'll get darker, but, but I'll go ahead and, and lay those darks in right now. So I don't get lost. It just kind of gives me a little bit of a roadmap um, as, as to, to where I'm going. Probably got that a little bit too dark. Lon Brower is watching. Hey, Lon. Lon is a, that guy, he's amazing. Yeah, you know, I, Lon is incredible. Um, I just met him up at the Adirondacks and everybody was blown away by his work. Yeah, yeah, he's uh Talk about a guy that can find a painting out of just about anything, you know, we, yeah. we he, and, and paints fast and, and, uh, you know, I'm fiddling around with one painting and, and he's already done four. Um, uh, and, and so just, just an amazing guy. So, 
So I think what I'll do now is, is uh, I'm going to wait on this. Well, I might go ahead and just do it. Just lay it in here. I've got a little, you start to get a little bit of, I'll give you a little bit of teaser as to what this, uh, this connecting dark is going to, how it's going to end up. Apologize for my shaky hand. I'm still, I'm still nervous about this whole deal. Well, you should be because you've got a big audience uh, from around the world. And by the end of the day, you'll have 10, 15,000 people watching and some days even more. Well, I've been, I've been flashing names on the screen. People, here's somebody from Zimbabwe. So I'm not speaking about them, though. I'm, I don't want to get in trouble. Well, I appreciate you telling me that because now I'm even more nervous than I was before. Well, you know, that's the only way we grow is if we get nervous and we push through our, our fears. You know, uh, one of the things that I, uh, I, I, I determined, I, I came back to watercolor. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, I'm a landscape architect by training and, and by profession. I'm still a practicing landscape architect. And so uh, um, 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 I, I, I did a lot. I did a lit. I mean, very little. I got really frustrated with watercolor back in college and, uh, and put it away for about 30 years. When I came back to it, um, I told myself that uh, whatever opportunity came along, I would seize it, no matter if I felt like I was ready or not. Um, uh, and so that, that theory is what, um, landed me at, as one of your, um, your, your demo artists at Tucson at the plein air convention in Tucson, which I totally laid a, a goose egg at that, uh, in that demo. <laughs> you did not lay a goose egg. Oh yeah, I think I did. But anyway, that, that, that idea that I'm going to seize every, every moment, I think that's a valuable I think that's a valuable uh, way, to, way to, to look at things. Well, I look back on, on my life and I realize how many great opportunities I passed up because I was insecure. Exactly. I mean, I, I was invited over to the Bee Gees house to hang out with them one night after a wedding I photographed. And um, I turned it down because I didn't feel worthy. Yeah insane i got yeah. invited i got invited to go shopping with red skelton the great comedian he asked me to i was at a press conference and i told him i was from indiana he said will you take me shopping and i said no <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to get his wife a birthday present i said no i couldn't believe it well yeah they're they're, they're we do we miss a lot of things because of and we all i think all artists have a little bit of the uh um uh, poser syndrome if, if they really knew me they'd know they wouldn't uh they wouldn't like me or or uh, uh i think feelings of inadequacy and and uh, so i have my share of that and but i just determined that whatever it was i was just going to do it and uh it's been a tremendous way of learning it's not, nothing teaches you more than doing something that that in in real truth you're not ready for uh, yeah well no nobody is ever ready everybody thinks that people who are big successes are ready but they're the same thing they're just they're, they're nervous they just hold their breath and go for it yeah exactly so we got about 10 minutes left tim okay so i'm not gonna there's no way i'm gonna finish this and i apologize I'm, I, i've been working kind of slow but maybe i'll finish when i finish it maybe i'll post it somewhere I'll post it on my Facebook so people can see it but but my next my next step would be to uh to bring this tree start bringing this tree down so I'm, I'm gonna I decided to paint this tree with some foliage it's, it's a half dead tree but uh it, it's winter time it has no foliage but I decided I was going to paint it with some foliage but being sort of half dead so I'll have a lot this tree in here which is going to form this big shape up here it's going to connect the darks the, it's going to get darker as it as it goes down and it's going to connect in into here and all these darks all of these darks I, I think will get darker i know they'll get darker maybe not the shadows i'm kind of liking the way those are looking but but the darks will get darker and and uh and these darks up in here will all tie together so tree wash it's really a, a it's it's nearly it's 90 percent done i just need to finish it now but um 
uh, we're not going to have enough time to to do that. But I can keep going if if and and you just cut me off whenever if we got ten minutes. But oh yeah, I'll cut you off. Don't worry, I cut everybody off. Okay, you're used to that. Well, all right, then I tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna I'm gonna just start on this tree up here, and uh, I'm gonna start since my light source is sort of up here. I'll start I'll start with a with a brighter a brighter uh, dose of that orange up there. And uh, I like to kind of articulate the, the edges of, of the canopy a little bit. And this is just going to be another graded wash coming down, coming down, um, down the page. And it's, it's going to get, uh, I'll start uh, introducing a little bit of my blue into it as I come down. That QOR paint, uh, core, core QOR, QOR, is great. Very vibrant. Uh, they were a sponsor of Watercolor Live. Good, good stuff. They sent out samples. Yeah, to this. Our attendees. Yeah, it, they're it's a really strong medicine. They, 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 um, they, um, they um, their paints are very. The pigments are really very, very strong. This is the got, same people who does uh, gold and acrylics, and also Williamsburg oils. Yeah all good products. I tell you what, never before, I don't think in history have we had the, the, the kind of materials that are available to the artist um, these days. Talk about my, my college experience um, with, um, with my watercolor. I, I, we used to have a, a little variety store. I think there were in other places in the country too, but but around here called TG and Y. I don't know. It's kind of like a dime store um, kind of place. Well, I, I had, uh, I got all excited about watercolor and I, I went to uh, um, left, left campus at Texas Tech where I went to school and, and went over to TG and Y and found the, the, the cheapest um, plastic watercolor set they had and bought it, um, took it home. Um, uh, I can't talk and paint at the same time. Uh, took it home and uh, and uh, pulled out my my best uh, typing paper that I had, and just totally made a mess, you know. And it was it was terrible. It was an awful experience. And I, I folded that thing up, put it in my my box, and literally didn't touch it again until thirty years later. But I, I tell that story a lot to say. Hey, get some good get some good materials to start off with, and and get get some good uh, the best you can best you can afford and best you can justify um, as far as paper and pigments and and all that and, and I'm sure that's true in oil or acrylic or any medium, but but I know it's true uh, with with regard to watercolor. Well, it's absolutely true. What tends to happen is we go for student grade paintings, we, paintings, uh, paints. We don't know they're student grade when we start out. They just are cheaper. But then you have to struggle to get the color out of them because they, they have a lot of filler and not as much pigment. And uh, if you go for something good from the beginning, you pay more, but it, it, tips, it tends to last longer because it has more pigment strength. Well, exactly. And, and if you'll... Uh particular with watercolor the the paper is so important you know and getting the getting the right uh getting the right paper see this is still this is still damp up here so i can drop some stuff in there and let 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 the, the watercolor gods handle that part of the painting for me and uh and uh as i come down here i'm trying to i'm trying to get stronger with these colors Somebody wants to know who makes your enamel palette. Um, that's a Craig Young palette. Okay. Uh, Craig Young, he builds he builds them. He's in he's in in England, and I had to wait about a year to get that. I I um, I, uh, I rusted out a bunch of palettes, and and then I finally I treated myself when I when I got uh, signature membership in the National Watercolor Society. I. I just, I was real, I was so proud of myself. I decided it was time to invest in a, a really good palette. And I use that. I use it all, all the time. That's what I, that's what I use. Plain air or in the studio. It doesn't matter. It just, that's what I use. 
got another one over here on the side that I use occasionally, but this is my go-to. So what I'll do is I'll, as this tree kind of terminates, I'm gonna start start uh, pulling some of these uh, these limbs down in here. I have a lot of pressure uh, because I'm a landscape architect. I, I I I have to draw good trees, you know. Yeah, well, you're pretty good at it, I'd say. Well, is know. there a key? Is there a key to trees? Um. Everybody does trees a little bit differently. Um, and so I don't know that there's a, there's one key. Um, for me, it's, it's about the, it's about the form. It's about the shape. Um, and, and it's about, um, uh, it's just got to feel right. And, and it's, and it's generally going to be uh, lighter uh, at the top where it's, where it's, where it's getting the sun. It's going to be, it's, it's got to, it's got to feel like it's not a one dimensional and I'm not sure how well this one's going to work out, but, but, uh, I'm not a very good demo artist because I like to stop and, and kind of look at things every once in a while. Yeah. All right. I'm going to just stop you right there. Cause I've been noticing your self-talk is a little bit negative and we're going to have to correct that. <laughs> okay. You're a very good demo artist. You're doing a terrific job. I'll finish it. You guys give him thumbs up and applause and also share this with other people so that they can, they can see it. All right. Thanks, Eric. I was with, um, uh, Michael Rigger, um, and he, he came to my house to photograph some sailboats at the lake and uh, he looked at my paintings and I kept making excuses for my paintings. And he, uh, before he left, he got in the car and then he stepped out. He says, I need to tell you something. I said, what's that? He said, your negative self-talk is getting in your way. He said, your paintings are beautiful. Everybody goes through different growth stages. Stop being negative. It's going to hurt you. Yeah. And so I stopped from that point. You know, I needed somebody to tell me. Well, you're, that's, that's, that's a good that's a good point. You're right about that. You're, you said you were going to stop me from my negative talk. I thought you meant you were going to stop me from, from pain. I will, but not yet. Okay. There's deadly silence. Everybody's just totally watching this. It's so cool. Well, I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. There you go with the negative self talk again. No, no, no. That's well, yeah, I get this. yeah. <laughs> All right, you're never gonna come back. You're gonna say Eric was critical. <laughs> that guy. All right. So since we're running low on time now, um, what would you, what would your process be next after the tree? Where would you go? Well, af after that tree, what, what I would do is, is, um, is, uh, uh, I, w I'm, I will, I would do a little more work to this tree. I'm not, I'm not quite done with it, but I need to think about it a minute, but, but uh, the, the next step would be to, um, um, there's going to be a lot of white left. So, so some of this, this van and, and, and this awning, I, I'll probably put a little bit of a, uh, because it, it is kind of shadowed, but I would finish off with these background trees. Uh, I've got a lot of calligraphy to do there. And All right. Really, I've got an idea. I'm yeah. sorry. To, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's fine. Um, I have a little bit of time because I don't have my next meeting till 1230. So I will give you 10 more minutes if you want it. Okay. Yeah, I'm back to I, I met real quick while I was doing that. I made a I made a copy in my sketchbook so I can let this, people can see kind of where we're going. I should have done that from the beginning, and I apologize, but that's kind of where we're going with this. That's the only reference that I'm that I'm referencing um, right now. Um, I don't well, I don't have anything else, you know. So uh, photos as 
we've talked a lot of people have talked a lot about photos in the past and how you can get trapped with some things uh, painting from photographs. I just made it early on. I just made it a, a practice. I'll have a photograph a lot of times for some information that I might have need to look at, but I don't paint from a photograph. I just decided I'm going to paint from my own sketches and, and that's what I'm going to do. So, so that's what I do. So um, while y'all were, while I was away, I mixed up a little bit. Of, I did cheat a little bit, Eric, but I've mixed up a little bit of more darks here and uh and uh and uh um that's that's going to be kind of my darkest can y'all see that palette but that's kind oh of yeah my, yeah that's kind of my darkest dark right there i can get just just almost black there with that um but i guess at this point i did kind of tone that van just a little bit um uh, and and i don't want it to be all stark white that'll be some white i'm going to do the same thing with this uh th th with this awning here coming through um and just kind of tone it a little bit and we'll see i can always with watercolor you know if you start light you can always go light darker on top of light and i so like the fact that you just took the paper towel and just blotted that for a second yeah yeah you can you can you can do that kind of thing um uh, move it around um uh, do whatever you want to do but so i think what i'll do is 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 work on this tree a little bit while in our remaining time so i i'm down to my cheap joe's happy strokes uh rigger brush i go through these things i buy them by the dozen uh, they don't last very long but they only cost about 99 cents and they make a beautiful line so i can make a kind of a thick line i can make a thin line i can make the whole purpose of a rigger is to get a line small enough to do a, a rigging on a ship, you know. So, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show some uh, some some uh, dead limbs coming out of this side of the tree, and they're just kind of random strokes. Um, I love your calligraphy. Well, I enjoy it, so, so I, and I do a lot of it, so. Um, um, I don't know how, how successful it is, but, but, uh, I always operate, you know, a lot of, you'll hear a lot of artists talk about, uh, the need to simplify. Um, my, my mantra has always been, uh, complicate, you know, <laughs> I, 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 uh, if a little bit works, uh, a lot works better, you know, so, um, it's not over. It's not done till it's overdone. Yeah, exactly. And, and and that's a that's a a, a big uh, bugaboo of mine. Uh, see that smear right there? See that? That's it's like I got my hand into the wet stuff there. But see that that stuff at the end of the day just doesn't matter, you know. Uh, yeah. It just doesn't matter at all. Um, there's a there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of. Um, you was asking me about trees earlier. Trees don't uh, all grow in a plane, so. As a landscape architect, we, we kind of drew these trees that, you know, they're, they're uh, real, real pretty uh, trees, but trees have form. And so limbs, limbs go this way and they go back this way and they go that way and they come towards you, you know, uh, so they're not all um, on one plane. Best way to say that, I guess. But anyway, I'll fiddle with that old tree until it's, until it's just overcooked. Fiddle it. Uh, um, but is that sort of kind of looking like an old scruggy, scra scraggy tree? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's really, at this point, we're, we're about putting in the darks, and, and uh, this is where I, I really get jazzed up. I love the darks. So I'll bring uh, that tree and that tree. I got a couple. You know, I flat forgot about there's a whole other tree behind there, and I I forgot about him. I should have laid that in earlier. So if you're, uh, if you just tuned in, we're just kind of staying a little longer than normal because uh, giving him a chance to do a little bit more on that back tree. Um, let me, uh, let me do this while in a little bit of limited uh, time left. Um, 
I'm going to throw in some things that will sort of start to make this uh, give you an idea what the final thing is, look, is going to look like. I'll, I'll put in some of these. Uh, my darkest darks. I'll tell you, if I had watched you uh, paint watercolor 30 years ago, I, I'd have been a watercolorist. There's, it's never too late, Derek. You know that better than anybody. Yep, that's right. My fellow rattlesnake gangers, they they uh, they make fun of me all the time that uh, if it's not finished until there's a high line wire going through it, you know. Uh, <laughs> but so, what do you use? You use that rigger for a high line wire? I do. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead while we got everybody. I usually wait till the very last because it's sort of the the fun the fun last thing. But but uh, I practice. People say, "Well, how do you make that line go?" Now, I'll probably screw it up right now. But I, I practice. I mean, and and it's a, a good practice to uh, to uh, get your rigger out and say, "I'm going to go from this point to that point," and uh, and and decide that's what I'm going to do in one stroke. I'm going to go from there and I'm going to stop there. I'm going to go from there. I'm going to stop there. Um, instead of nothing's worse than a line that that does that, you know, just kind of starts and stops and sketches along. Um, I learned this in architecture school. It's just uh, start, stop, one motion. So, uh, and you got to get kind of get the consistency of the paint right. But uh, I'll go ahead and put these in, although it's a little bit early, but just for fun. So I'm going to start there and I'm going to stop out there somewhere. So I'm going to go just like that. This one here is going to start over here and it's going to end there, hopefully. And I'm going to drag my hand through wet paint by doing it. But I didn't have enough paint in my brush, but that's okay. The worst thing you can do is go back and try to fix one. So I'll just do better the next time. Well, it reads well. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, so, uh, again, with the darks. Somebody said that Nancy West says, I wonder if the trusty old pizza cutter would work with watercolor. She uses it all the time with oil. I've never heard of that trick. I haven't either. I'm going to have a lot of sliced up paper. Charlie is Charlie Hunter is, is single-handedly uh, made the uh, window squeegee, the uh, tool, the most desired tool in the, art world yeah all of a sudden the squeegee company is like why where are we getting all this business <laughs> he actually had the squeegee company representative on his show the here a while back and that, and that was fun charlie's doing watercolor now yeah i hate to hear that that knucklehead he'll he'll uh, he'll show the he'll in, in about a month he'll be showing the rest of us up yeah, and then you won't have you won't be able to make a living. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you could you could probably have a talk with him. Send send your goons out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it's nothing quite so intimidating as West Texas goons. <laughs> I'm fresh out of goons. I need to get <laughs> some goons. Um, they don't carry guns where he's from. That's right. That's right. Um, the rest of this is just uh, kind of calligraphy, um, uh, just just finishing. Uh, uh, I call it junk. If you look on my website, I, I describe my work as as uh, um, sloppy representationalism. So it looks like something, but it's really sloppy, uh, sloppily done. But um, um, uh, at at this point, um, you know, it's starting to feel finished. Uh, work. Missed, uh, I mean, if we got, we, I'm just going to go until until you 
until you just cut me off. So what I need to do, and I forgot to do earlier, I'm going to re-wet. This is a little technique that some, some people might be interested in. I would just clear water. I can re-wet an area. I totally forgot about this. I'm going to re-wet this area all along here, down into there. It, as you as probably a lot of people know, West Texas is just flat as a pancake. I mean, we don't have any, 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 uh, any, uh, we got long horizons, to put it that way. Uh, I just re-wet that and I'm going to drop a little bit of, uh, it's too wet. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There's some stuff going on in the distance there that I want to make sure that we have something going on in the, in the distance. I want Tim, I want to tell everybody something that uh, I saw techniques on watercolor live that I had never seen used before. And yeah. I've started applying those techniques to oil painting and it's working. Uh, a trick yeah. like that would work really well. Well, I didn't do it very well because I, I got it a little bit too wet, but anyway, you get the idea. Works for me. little dry brush i didn't talk about dry brush but a little bit of toned paint there and a little dry brush gives you the eye gives you the feeling like there's there's something going on back there don't know what it is and don't really care all right diane says there's a song called miles and miles of texas miles and miles of texas See, I, I, I screwed up there and I put that telephone, that light pole in there down into the wet paint and it fuzzed all out right there. But you, you know what? I'm not, even, you know, you don't worry about those. I don't worry about those kinds of things. It, it just, it just, it is what it is. And, uh, and it all comes together um, in the end uh, most of the time. Now, what, what are you going to do with that truck? Since that's kind of your focal point, what, uh, what happens to it? Uh, not much else happens to it. Um, um, well, I'll say that. I've got a little bit of, line, of a line right here that I'll put in. It's got a, it's got a little more, it's got a little more uh, uh, definition. Uh, this, is a, this is a mirror. My hands are kind of shaky um it's got a little um a little thing here a little thing here maybe a deal there um um but um what's gonna what's gonna happen to that is it's gonna get this dark shadow that goes up see that it's gonna yeah. get this dark shadow that gets all up in the here and up in their business from there, and then ties in the here and all up into here. So I got another dark shadow to, that's going to kind of fade out into this other preliminary wash that I put down here. So there's some darks that's going to happen to tie all this, and that'll be the last thing I do uh, to tie everything together. Um, um, uh, and then. Uh, Basically, oh, I'm going to I'm going to have a, a little shadow cast, kind of a limmy, limmy shadow from this tree here coming across that van, too. But what I want, I want the van to pop this. I'm, I'm kind of violating the rule of thirds a little bit here, but it's kind of a linear composition anyway. But that that the whiteness, when it's all said and done, this whiteness right in here is going to remain. Um, and uh, and that, that's going to be the white, the whitest. Your eyes are just going to go to that, and hopefully. Okay, Tim, I'm putting your website on the screen. Everybody needs to go there. What will they find there? Um, 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 I, I, everything I've got that I've ever done in my life, I think, is on there. So, and and. <laughs> and and I've got a couple of galleries listed on there. One's down in Fort Davis, Texas, and and um, and then one here in Lubbock. 
and uh, and everything is either in the gallery or it's in my wife's spare bedroom in the house. And so it, everything's for sale. And so it, whatever you want is there. All right. Terrific. Well, Tim, why don't you come back on camera? We're going to say goodbye because we got a meeting coming up. And All right. So do this. Okay, we're turning the camera around. Did I do it right? Well, uh, yeah, you're right. Man, you are so good. Well, thank you, Eric. Thank you. It's fun. That was great. Tim, it was a pleasure having you on, and and we'll uh, you'll send me the image, or you can post it on the Facebook when. Uh, when you're done and uh, everybody can find it there. So thank you so much for being on today. Thumbs up and applause for Tim Oliver. Thank you. Very really terrific. Thank you, Tim.